Simulation Express is a design validation tool that includes a small subset of the features available in the full version of SolidWorks Simulation. Like any other tool, you have to learn not only how to use it, but also when to use it. Before I get started testing a part in SolidWorks, I want to give you a little information about the types of testing you can perform using Simulation Express. I also want to focus on when to use it, and just as importantly, when not to use it. Simulation Express is included for free with every seat of SolidWorks, but you should know that there are certain limitations to Simulation Express. Limitations you won't run into with the full license of SolidWorks Simulation, Simulation Professional, and Simulation Premium. One of these limitations is that it can only be used on SolidWorks parts, not assemblies. The full version of SolidWorks Simulation can be used to test assemblies, and even determine the types of load each part in an assembly will experience. Armed with that knowledge, you can go back into Simulation Express to test and validate parts individually. Simulation Express is used to perform what is called a linear static study on a part in SolidWorks. This term implies three important assumptions about any part it's testing. First, the materials involved must be linear. Second, deformations must be small. And third, loads must be static. If the test you wish to simulate does not meet these criteria, then Simulation Express may not provide accurate, meaningful results. Let's look at these assumptions in a bit more detail. For a material to be considered linear, it must obey Hooke's law. This simply means that a material behaves like a spring. The amount of force applied to a spring is related to its deflection by a constant value. If you triple the force, you also triple the deflection. This describes a simple linear relationship. A material exhibiting this behavior for most of its useful life, such as steel, is said to be a linear material. Most steels and aluminum alloys can be assumed linear in typical applications. Rubber is a common example of a nonlinear material. Nonlinear material behavior is not supported in Simulation Express and will not be discussed in this course. The second assumption I'll make in Simulation Express is that the material deformations are relatively small. So what exactly does that mean? As a general guideline, it means that the deformation of a model must be small in relation to its overall size. If you can't tell, or can just barely tell, that a loaded part has deformed, it probably conforms to the small displacement assumption. If the deformation is obvious, the small assumption theory may break down. A symptom of this is unexpected stiffening of the part due to the deformation, much as a guitar string gets stiffer as it is stretched. If you are concerned that large deformations might be impacting your results, you may need to explore the response using full SolidWorks simulation. The third assumption I'll make in Simulation Express is that loads are static. This means that the loads do not change over time and that they are applied slowly. Most structural loads can be represented as static loads, including forces and pressures. Time-dependent loads, such as vibration from shaker tables and engines, or drop testing, would require dynamic analysis available in the more advanced SolidWorks simulation products. For more information on the full suite of simulation tools that SolidWorks offers, Visit SolidWorks.com for product information. And don't hesitate to contact your SolidWorks reseller, who can provide you with a live demo. Keeping the assumptions I just discussed in mind, let's move on to the first exercise, static loading of a single part. <laughs> 